Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, publisher of Aspire Magazine, the beloved inspirational digital magazine for women since 2006. You know, I've always been drawn to astrology, sun signs, and learning more about um, who I am through astrology. So today I'm so excited because joining me today is Carmen Turner Scott, and we're going to be talking about the 12 sun signs, their strengths and weaknesses, self-care, healing, and I promise you so much more. Carmen Turner Scott is an author, licensed clinical social worker, psychological astrologer and teacher with national and international clientele. She's a published author and has written seven books. Her two newest books are Sun Signs, Houses and Healing, Build Resilience and Transform Your Life Through Astrology. I actually have that one in my hand. And her other one is The Mysteries of the Twelfth Astrological House, Fallen Angels. She has been researching the eighth and twelfth astrological houses in trauma, healing, and transformation for the past two and a half decades. She began her astrological work at the age of 16 after an experience with a glowing ball of light in her doorway and began studying metaphysics and the Edgar Cayce um, material at the time. At that time, she has presented astrology workshops for the Association of Research and Enlightenment throughout the years and teaches a variety of spiritual development classes She's also the founder of Deep Soul Divers Astrology and the admin of several Facebook astrology groups. Welcome, welcome, Carmen. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, I am so excited. I have your new book. It, I just arrived, so I've got to dabble in it a little bit. So I can't wait to dive into this conversation. So I, I'd love to go back. I always, a lot of my guests, their own personal journey led them to the work they do in the world and it sounds like that experience at 16 opened a door for you that really set you on your life's path yes it, it really did um you know I always was different you know I always felt like I was different from people in my family and was very sensitive very emotional very imaginative and just very spiritual and I always, you know, was interested in angels and all these things that I really don't know how I even knew about this stuff, but I was just born this way, right? And I remember, you know, just being very open-minded and very um, imaginative. And when I was in high school, um, well, one of the biggest things that changed my life, it was the same year that I saw that glowing ball light. Um, I actually had a, a friend of mine that was accidentally shot and killed. And it was a tragic accident in my hometown. And, you know, I was 16, she was 15. And that was the first time I ever had lost someone that I was close to. So that was a really tough year for me in my life. And I feel like it really opened me up um, to my spiritual abilities, uh, so to speak. So after, you know, that experience, that same year, I had woke up in the middle of the night after a basketball game and I always had to have my door open and the night light on I was afraid of the dark you know I was I was just very um you know sensitive I always had to have the door open in my bed a certain way to look out and uh and I remember one night you know I woke up and I saw this about the size of a softball just a translucent a uh, watery ball of light glowing there and and at the time I was afraid you know because it was the unknown and I didn't know what it was <laughs> And I couldn't move. I was frozen. I couldn't, I had no voice. I tried to yell for my mother. And it, it's like I laid there for hours watching this thing. And, uh, and it never came in my room because I had control of my mind. And I kept praying, please don't have it come in my room. And it never did. 
And eventually I, my voice came back and I yelled for my mother and she saw it too. And, and it was my witness to this. So I loved that the fact that she saw it because typically, you know, my family would say, just your imagination, go back to sleep. You know, I would have very vivid dreams. I was a, I was a sleepwalker. You know, I would get up and act out dreams and I don't remember doing it, but I, I used to sleepwalk when I was younger. And so my mother saw it and she didn't know what to tell me, of course, because, you know, she was more of a skeptic and didn't want to upset me. But she kind of told me, maybe someone's shining a flashlight in, maybe it's a lightning bug. And I said, it's huge. You know, it's too big for that. And uh, she said, just go back to sleep, right? So I laid there and watched it till I think I passed out. And then the next morning in the kitchen, my mother said, that was not a lightning bug. I don't know what that was. And I said, I think it was an angel or a spirit guide. And I started researching all of these things, the angels, um, spirit guides, astrology, and bought my first astrology book that same year at a little uh, mystical bookstore in St. Louis, Missouri, and read about my sun sign, Virgo, and read about, you know, my, all the planets and what houses they were in, in my birth chart. And it validated my experiences for the first time in my life. I'm like, wow, this is, this is me. Why is this accurate? Right? So I became obsessed and taught myself astrology at 16 started doing charts for other people at 19 and it's been my passion ever since so that's kind of how i got into becoming a, a psychological astrologer so that journey common led you to the work that you're doing in the world and in all the conversations i've had with women on this show i i, I love asking them that question because i've discovered that something in their youth or past led them to, to today, like for you and I, this conversation all began with that moment for you in your bedroom. So is that when you first really dove into astrology at 16 years old? Yes, definitely. You know, that was, I wanted to find out, you know, why I had these, these experiences that I could not explain. And, and I just happened to, you know, see this book about, you know, the sun sign, you know, and all the different sun signs and I bought it. And when I read about myself, it just validated, you know, why I had these mystical experiences. You know, my son was in the 12th house and my moon was in the eighth house. And I read about what that meant and how you will have spiritual experiences and dream very deeply, which I was a very vivid dreamer. And I would dream about things that would happen, but no, I couldn't explain it to anyone. And, and I really didn't understand what was, why I was the way I was. So it really helped me um, gain greater self-awareness and be able to help other people um, as a tool of self-awareness to help other people heal and see their strengths and see, you know, validate why their life was the way it was and why they were the way they were personality wise, you know, and I, I majored in psychology and, and became a social worker. So it's, I've always used astrology as part of what I do working with people ever since I was 16. What a powerful combination too, you know, like that, that has to be so powerful combination of the tools to use for clients because you can, it's almost like you have the understanding of why they're wired the way they are through astrology, as well as the psychological of, of their upbringing and traumas and everything else. Is that what led you to the work you do with trauma victims? Yes, really. Um, you know, going through my own experiences of, of, of a traumatic situation or with losing my friend um, and also other people that have shared their problems with me, I, I used to always have people share their problems with me. And in, in school, ever since I was growing up, even in the grocery store, people would come up to me and tell me very, very deep things, very traumatic things, you know, like, you know, my husband died or I lost my child. And people would just tell me all of their, their powerful losses. And I would just listen and be supportive. And, and I wanted to, to gain more skills. Um, number one, to learn how to help people that have been through trauma, you know, traumatic situations and help them recover and, and become stronger and, and, and healthy. And I also wanted to, to figure out what about what in the astrology chart can show trauma. And are there certain placements? Are there certain aspects? 
And that's what I started researching really was about mystical experiences, spiritual gifts, and also tr people that had trauma. And what I realized was the eighth house in, in our chart is the house of death, transformation, rebirth, trauma, healing, transformation, all these powerful things. And I found that people that have planets in the eighth house of the astrological birth chart and like Pluto, Pluto is also a planet we want to look to when we look at trauma, but seeing where that is. And, and I could see that most people with eighth house planets have lost a loved one, a parent ha at a young age, um, accidents through accident, through, you know, early death, um, and really have the, those experiences that change them. And I started collecting research and I, I wrote some articles about the eighth house and I had people write me from all over the world. And that's how I ended up writing my first, one of my first books, uh, The Mysteries of the Eighth House, Phoenix Rising, was based on uh, stories and experiences that clients have shared with me from all over the world with having eighth house planets and, and some of the trauma, uh, traumatic situations they went through. And then how, um, you know, how this article that I wrote helped them. So I wrote a book just for eighth house people uh, to give them tips and skills um, to know that they're not alone that, you know, this is part of their journey and, and they can be, they become wounded healers. You know, they become people that can help other people heal because it's like a counselor. You know, if, if you've been through something yourself, you can truly be um, empathic and, 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 and empathize and understand someone else's pain. If you've gone through that similar pain, right? There's an understanding there. And so that's what I, what I've always tried to do is, is to use my research and my experiences with people whether it's friends, family, loved ones, or through my work um, to show that, you know, they're not alone. And that's kind of why I created my Facebook groups. I have an eighth house astrology group and a 12th house astrology group. And it's for people or anyone that wants to learn about these uh, houses, but it's for people that, that live um, these experiences, right? And they can share their stories and ask for help. And it's like a support group. Really, mm -hmm. my groups are there to support others and be positive, right? That's so powerful. And, and I'm so eager to dive deeper into the eighth house because like, I've, I always follow astrology, but I've never dove into like the houses and I just follow the sun signs, you know what I mean? Like the basic. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm a big numerology fan. So when we, we're going to take our first break, when we come back, I'd love to talk a little more about the eighth house, what it means and what it means for like like um, if, like I have Aquarius in my eighth house, but maybe someone else has cancer. And what's the difference between stuff like that? Sure. So we'll be back in a moment, my friends. You can visit Tom and Turner shop at 8in12houses.com. And the number 8 and 12 are num yeah, <laughs> numerals not spelled out. So that's 8in12houses.com. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine, inspiring and supporting women on the path of self discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribe to aspire.com. Hey America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. 
I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back, my friend. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm blessed to be here with Carmen Turner Short, author of Sun Signs, Houses, and Healing Build Resilience and Transform Your Life Through Astrology. So, you mentioned that the eighth house is about transformation, death, etc. So, I just looked up mine real quick going, I got to know what mine is. I remember I had a screenshot. Yeah. And, but I never knew what it meant. You know, you get your, your astrology thing from online. And yes. so I have screenshots, but it was all Chinese to me. So like my eighth house is Aquarius. What does it mean for me yes. in the eighth house? Or is, I assume it depends what planet you have. And that's different for everybody. Yes. Yeah, so, so do you, let me ask you, do you have any planets, any symbols that within the house or is it, is it empty? Hmm. I, I don't know. It's just like a printout thing. Let me look. So, let, oh, I think I see what you mean. There's little symbols, huh? Those are the planets. Yes. And, and, yeah, and if oh, they're, it, it doesn't have a symbol on this page anyway. It says eighth house starts at three degrees Aquarius. And then in parentheses says, containing saturn okay so you have you do have a planet in your eighth house so okay. so so that's important so what we want to what we look at is you know all the houses rule a different area of life so there's 12 houses so they're all important but i've you know i feel like the 12th and 8th houses are the most spiritual um transforming houses so that's why i just love researching it and meeting people and and hearing their stories but the eighth house we all have an eighth house we all have a certain sign that falls on the eighth house cusp so based on your your date and time of birth um you know your your year and your place you need to know your time to get a very accurate chart the time is very important so as long as you have um you know your date month year time of birth place of birth when we do your natal chart, you have a certain sign on the horizon and we call that the rising sign or the ascendant. And that's kind of, that starts the first house of the, of the astrological wheel. Okay. And that is your uh, mask. You know, that's how people perceive you. That's how other people um, judge you is based on your rising sign. So if it's different than your sun sign, People are like, oh, you're very different than what I thought you were. You know, that first impression, you're not like I thought. But if it's the same as your sun sign, you're rising and ascendant, people are like, oh, you're, you know, what you see is what you get kind of thing. So each sign, you know, for instance, I'm Virgo rising. So I have Aries on my eighth house. Okay. So for you, you've got Aquarius on your eighth house. So there is something we can look at if, if someone doesn't have any planets in the eighth house, if it's, it, we can just look to, that's not a bad thing. Let me tell people that because they're like, why don't I have anything in this house? It, it's fine. It just means you don't have any karma or any major life lessons in that area of life. It's okay. It's not a bad thing to have an empty house. So I just want to put that out there. But um, whatever sign is on that cusp, um, astrologers can look at, um, in my opinion, it shows where you can have some wounds, you know, um, what energy you might be wounded by. So for me, I know it sounds strange, but uh, the people that hurt me the most tended, they, they all had Aries sun or they had Aries energy. Okay. So if Aquarius is there, people with Aquarius energy might be the people that have hurt you in some way or wounded you. And you have to heal that wound. Okay. And it has to do with, it could be actual people that are an Aquarius sun sign, or it could be people that are Aquarius like, and the energy of Aquarius is uh, known to be detached, a little bit aloof, a little bit cold and distant, okay? Intellectual type people, right? Innovative people, but they also struggle to commit. They don't like to uh, be um, committed. They like to have freedom. So that might be the kind of uh, person or energies that hurt you at some time in your life. We also um, can see, well, some astrologers do this. I don't like to 
to dabble in this too much because I like to keep the positive, but you can also look to the eighth house and see how you might die. Okay. Now I don't really get into that um, a lot, but there is a lot of research about it. So for me with Aries on the eighth house, I've always been worried about that because um, they talk about how, you know, your death will usually be sudden and, and through accidents. Okay. Yeah, who um, would know? I, I wouldn't want to know that. No, I don't want to know. So I've, I read about it. I've studied it and I know some of, um, you know, what it all means, but I don't tell my clients that because I don't want to scare people, but people will write me and ask me, you know, can you see how I'll die? What's my, th-? and I said, I don't do that. You know, that I don't focus on that, but I do know my own chart and I have seen that, um, you know, some of these experiences that I've had, um, I've had, I've had three friends die through accidents with guns. Okay. That's very Aries. Aries is, you know, in the, the military, you know, a uh, war, right. Um, accidents. And so I have my moon and my Jupiter and, and these planets in the eighth house in Aries. And then I have Aries on that cusp. I can see in my life how it has played out right in certain ways that unexpected, um, violent kind of um, death issues, right, with people around me. Um, So the eighth house can show those kind of things. But the thing that I like to focus on is the eighth house shows how you become more resilient and how you heal. So so for, for myself, Aries helps me be a little bit more selfish because Aries is is self centered. Everything is about, you know, they're the key word I am. So Aries people are known to be blunt and a little bit self-focused and selfish. And they always think about, well, how's this going to affect me? So those kind of people always hurt me because I was, I was opposite of that. I was more selfless, like too much so, like I didn't have boundaries. So I had to be hurt by some people that had Aries energy to grow, right, to become stronger. And that's what the eighth house is about is healing and rebirth and transformation and becoming a stronger person. So for you with that Aquarius there, I would say that, you know, through being um, a humanitarian, through helping people in a more uh, practical, detached way, okay, an intellectual way, um, that's how you can heal, you know, not taking on people's problems as your own, because Aquariuses are good at about not doing that. They can detach from other people. And so that's your stuff, not mine, right? So that's kind of a, one of your strengths with having Aquarius on your eighth. It helps you, um, you know, you want to learn, you want to teach people things, you know, technology, radio, you know, everything you're doing is, a, is really Aquarius energy. You know, it's uh, Aquarians are humanitarians. They want to help large groups of people and, and reach large groups of people and learn and study and, and research. So that's kind of how I would interpret your eighth house there. That is powerful because it's, as you were speaking, when you said about what it's about, I saw like a phoenix rising, right? So Uh that's how I feel. My trauma, my journey, my younger years, all the pain, all all of it is in my, this is my personal experience, is worth it because it led me to who I am today, right? And many times people have said, Linda, you have reinvented yourself in are the most resilient person I know. So you use a lot of words that people say and they're like, you're such an inspiration knowing what my background is, right? Sure, sure. So that really resonated. And then when you said like, you, like I have a media company, radio, reaching large people, my vision to bring conversations like this and to highlight women like you who are doing elevated work in the world. So I use my media platform to spread love and good and positivity yes. while shining a spotlight on other leaders like you. So it's it, it all resonated with what you said. So thank you for taking that time. Because I think a lot of us, we, you know, we grew up with, read your, your horoscope for the day, but it's so much deeper than that. And we're going to take our next break and we're going to come back because I don't want to have to interrupt you for another minute. So we're going to take a quick break, come back and you talk a lot about self-care and I want to talk, start the next um, segment with your thoughts on self-care, why it's important, especially in these days. So we'll be back in a moment with Carmen Turner Shop. Learn more at 8 and 12 houses.com. And those are the number 8 and 12. We'll be right back, my friend. This is OTRFM. 
part of the IOM Radio Network. Are you feeling called to clear your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual blockages? That's your soul and environment speaking to you and asking you to uncover all the clutter that is preventing you from living the life you envision. Felicia Messina de Haiti, soul coaching master practitioner and trainer and teacher of advanced interior alignment and medicine wheel feng shui, supports her international clientele by creating inner and outer transformation in their environments and their lives by combining elements from her extensive training, experience, and intuition. Felicia is a master intuitive coach certified by Colette Baron reed and has served as a master mentor for Denise Lynn's Elemental Space Clearing Certification Course, as well as her Ultimate Clutter Clearing. Explore her offerings, including certification courses in Feng Shui, Space Clearing, Soul Coaching, and Reiki at FeliciaDeHaiti.com. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Healing Light on Ohm Times Radio every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Me, a cat moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. This is OTRFM part of the IOM Radio Network. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. Thanks for joining me today. We're talking about sun signs, houses, healing, resilience, and so much more with Carmen Turner Shaw. So Carmen, in the book, you bring up self-care. Um, why do you feel it's so important? Yes. Well, it's it's something that I, you know, I've always realized that people that are in the spiritual, you know, do spiritual work and counseling and in the helping professions, they don't do a good job of taking care of themselves. You know, they, they're, they're selfless. They tend to give, you know, give, 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 and, and they can get a little bit burned out at times and get compassion fatigue. And I started just seeing this with myself in my own life, how I need to take better care of myself. And, you know, because when we get stressed, when we neglect our own needs and we're constantly helping and serving others, we get depleted. And if, you know, I like the quote, if, you know, fill your own cup, um, your cup needs to be full for you to fill other people's cups, right? Because if your energy is depleted, you can't fully and adequately help other people. So I realized just as a, as a counselor, that's something we always learn is, is to do self-care and to really do it. But I see that people don't know how to do it. A lot of people, oh, yeah, we talk about self-care, we do trainings, but a lot of my colleagues, a lot of people I know, they don't take care of themselves, and, and they get sick, and they have all these things because they're constantly go, 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 helping everyone else, so it was interesting because I took a class last year, um, and it was about leadership, and there were people, uh, these really popular leaders in the, in the, in the St. Louis area, and, and that have been, you know, just amazing people in the social service field. And we got to ask them each a question. So I remember asking each of them when we got to meet with them, uh, what do you do for self-care? And none of them could answer me. They pretty much said they don't. And so that shocked me, right? That these such successful people that are just, you know, the head of United Way, head of all these agencies and, and, and just did so much to help all the others all the time that they, they don't take, they don't know how to answer me. And they said, really, I, I need to do better at that, right? 
So I realized this isn't just me and it's not just counselors. It's a lot. It's everyone. You know, everyone that is out there helping people, you need to you need to take time to really make sure you're OK, because you don't want to get burned out and you don't want to, um, you know, get your health affected and all these things. And you can help people even more if your cup is full. Right. If your love tank is full, you can really do a lot more and have more energy. And so I started looking at the sun signs, you know, through my research and just through counseling people over the years. I realized that certain sun signs have certain traits, certain strengths, certain gifts, but also certain ways they do self-care and not self-care is not the same for every sun sign. Right. Because each sun sign uh, deals with things very differently. You know, we have the fire signs, the air signs, the, the water signs, and the earth signs. And they each, in my book, I talk about how they each can benefit through different activities because, you know, air signs, for instance, um, those are Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra. They need uh, mental stimulation. You know, they're intellectual. So uh, reading, playing games, taking a class, learning something, that can be, um, you know, very beneficial to them. And as well as, you know, the earth signs, they like to be doing something, right? Feeling productive and going out in nature, walking, being outdoors is good for earth signs. You know, feel the, the earth on their feet, walk barefoot, work in a garden with their hands, with the dirt, you know, there's certain, that helps uh, the earth signs. And then fire signs, you know, they like action. They like to be on the go. They're a little bit restless. And so it can be harder for them to meditate and to do, you know, deep breathing and mindfulness exercises because their energy is so active, it's hard to sit still, right? So if you tell, uh, you know, a, a Sagittarius to sit and meditate, it's going to be hard for them because they are always on the go. They're always wanting to be moving, right, and doing something. So um, I realized that each sign needs different tips. And water signs, um, you know, they're emotional and sensitive. They They easily can, you know, withdraw into solitude and meditate and and pray and breathe and write and, and read they love that so their most normal self-care activities that you learn in classes the water signs excel at that but the other signs they have a little bit more difficulty with that self-care right applying it you know i think we all know what we're supposed to do but actually applying it in our life is where we get stuck and i've been guilty of it myself and it, it's so funny because this year um, I work with a lot of people that are in different states, you know, from a distance. And um, a couple of uh, them noticed that I was taking more leave. And they asked me, they said, wow, I realize if Carmen's taking leave, that I can take leave, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I modeled some good behavior, right? Um, and so I'm trying to do that more to, to model as a leader to people that I work with, that, that we need a work-life balance. You know, you can't, sacrifice your own health and life for your job at all times you have to have a good balance so that's kind of what i think about self-care yeah but it's so powerful as you just so beautifully shared if we're in the spiritual and personal development field and we're serving others we need to be at our vibrational emotional and psychological best and i was one that struggled with that for years i've been an entrepreneur for 30 years and way back um, I was 14 hour days, 16 hour days, push, push, push. I was in that masculine striving, chasing energy. And I mm -hmm. can see now, Carmen, it was to heal the wounds of childhood to go, well, if I win another business award, I will be worthy, right? If I, uh -huh. if I, if I speak at this shelter in this organization, I will be worthy. And when I healed that, I began the journey back to myself with self-care. But, you know, it's something I, I struggle with less now, but, but I have to be very conscious. And what you said about something else really resonated when you said about leaders and that the others in your community saw that you were leading um, by taking sabbaticals. For seven years, I, I and my team take Fridays off, three-day weekends. Oh, that's and great. I, yeah, and I take 14 weeks off a year. I just came back from a nine-week summer sabbatical and we leave in November for Costa Rica for three weeks. Oh, nice. Well, part of, I got to tell you though, and you'll, I know you'll understand it. It took me a lot of healing to be able spiritually from a vibration point of view, to be able to say, it's okay to do this. Um, I'm still being of service because service-based 
hearts, you know, we mm -hmm. might struggle with that. And then I realized, oh my God, I can serve at such a higher level. So now I serve a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs. That's who I coach, all female entrepreneurs, coaches, therapists, et cetera. And guess what they say? They go, Linda, I want your model of an intentional life and an intentional business. You create your business for your life, not your business to take your life. Yes. And so your words and your awareness really spoke to my heart because it mirrored that um it mirrored my personal journey. And and I know the ripple effect it can have by your community seeing you honoring yourself. Yes. Yes, it's it's um, you know, we have to we have to do this. I, I feel like especially during you know, after COVID um and everything that people went through I think a lot of people are tr have a little bit of trauma from what what we went through with um you know having to be remote and telework and then adjust you know take having the kids at home and just people we look back I don't think people have really healed a lot of the things that happened and we're still adjusting to this new world right and uh and so especially with what I do I I work with um you know, I work with uh, advocacy, victim advocacy. So I have people that are advocates that actually respond to victims out in the communities and I'm their policy. I oversee it and give them advice and support from a distance, but they're out there doing the hand, you know, the field work. Right. And so um, I realized, you know, for four years, I didn't hardly take leave. And I was, I was, I'm a workaholic, you know, by nature, because I'm a Virgo. And I like to be productive and I, I feel like I always have to be doing something, you know, and, and, and achieving something. And now that I'm older, like you said, the past five years, I've changed. I, I'm like, you know what? It's okay not to be doing anything. It doesn't mean you're not worthy or you're not um, doing what you're supposed to do. It, it can be healthy to take a break and not be having to do something all the time or work, or it's okay to take relaxation time and to, to go to the beach and not check your email, right? And and for the first time in five years, I'll be I'll tell you a story. This month we had a, a TDY for work that we had to go somewhere for a summit. And I told myself, you know what, I'm not taking my work computer. And I have never not took my work computer with me on a trip, right? And I thought, well, I'm supposed to be in this training all day on and then at night is my free time. If they need me, they can call me. You know, I sent my phone number. Everybody knows they can call me or text me if it's an emergency. But I did not take my work computer. And I can't tell you, I really enjoyed not having that because at night after the summit, I could just go out with friends and went out to eat and got to reconnect. And I didn't worry about being on the email in the hotel room at night, right, stressing out. So I did that for myself. And that that was hard to do, but it felt so good. And you know what? Everything ran fine. I got back and there was no crisis, right? So it's those little things you do to take care of your own self-care, you know, and everything, everyone has different things that work for them, right? It's not just a cookie, a peanut butter spread, right? No, and it's so hard in finding um, the way. And I'll tell you, I remember the first time I did that too. And my honey was like, yeah, I'm not taking the computer on our vacation. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. And I couldn't believe the first few days, it was like an anxiety, like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. And then finally I said, you know what? I deserve this. And I'm I'm going to say that time was the hardest, but I've never taken my computer since. Good for you. Because, but I had to start there, right? I had to start with yes. that first step. So congratulations on that big step, because I know as someone that can really relate to your story, I know how much of a big step it is. And I have to be very conscious. So like my, my I'm all about being instead of doing now. And I'm I'll be 60 in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, it's just a whole new energy. And what I found out is the abundant success, um, spaciousness that I chased for years <laughs> comes right to you when there's space for it to come. Yeah. That was eye opening to me. So my abundance levels went up, my health went up, my spaciousness I had with family and fun increased. And I'm like, what the heck? I was keeping my energy and in, in calendar so full, trying to get all those things. And the reality is when you create space, they can come in. So that was a life lesson for me. Yes, I agree. We're, we're going to take a final break. And when we come back to the last segment, I want to talk about um, Let's talk about some of your favorite things about each of the 12 sun signs and 
hint, hint. I can't wait to hear what you say about Scorpio. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment, my friends. Please visit Common at 8 and 12 houses.com. Grab a copy of Sun Signs, Houses, and Healing um, at your local bookstore, at our website. And um, we'll be back in a moment. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Mission driven business owners, are you feeling energetically drained? It's time to shift that so you can lead at your highest level. Lee Murphy Wolf, creator of the Calibrate Method, has helped hundreds of entrepreneurs create sustainable success. She teaches her clients how to unwind the energetic patterns that affect their flow, tap into their feminine leader energy, and build energetic resilience so they are aligned for the next level of business growth. Lee's unique programs combine the healing frequencies of tuning forks, energy management techniques, and simple business design principles to help you reduce overwhelm, restore vitality, and realign with more ease. Lee offers free energy clearings and tunings twice a week in her free Facebook community, The Balanced Business. Learn more about Lee and her services at leemurphywolf.com. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back to the last segment of today's show. I am with Common Turner Shot, and we've been talking about sun science, self care, um, astrology. So I'd love in the last segment for us to go over some of your favorite things about each of the 12 sun signs. Yes. Yeah, so we'll start with Aries. So Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. Aries rules the first house. And what I love about Aries is their, their honesty. They're very blunt and direct and they, you always know what they really feel and think, right? They're not, they're not manipulative type of people. They, if you want to know what they think, they will tell you. And I love that about them. And I love their energy. They have a high energy and they're good at motivating other people. And I just, I love, I love that about Aries. And then Taurus is the second sign of the Zodiac. What I like about Taurus is they have a very calm and soothing energy and presence, and they make great listeners. And they also can be a little bit strong-willed and stubborn. But what I like about them is you know that they're loyal and that they are dependable. And you can rely on them, right, to finish tasks or to be there for you if you need them, okay? I like that about Taurus. And then Gemini, Gemini is the third sign of the zodiac, it's ruled, it rules the third house. And Geminis are, what I love about them is their friendliness and their adaptability, they're versatile. Uh, I love how they're just social, they're excellent communicators and they, they're fun. You know, they like to witty, sarcastic, have a funny sense of humor. Um, I like that about Geminis. And then Cancer, uh, you know, I like Cancers. My grandmother was a Cancer. Cancer rules the fourth house and cancers are the mother of the zodiac. So they're very nurturing, caring, sympathetic people. And what I like about them is that they're nurturers and, and they make great listeners. And I like how they help the underdog. You know, they usually uh, like to work with children and, and they love animals, things like that. So uh, that's some of my favorite things about the sign cancer. And then Leo, oh my gosh, you know, Leo is, you know, the king and queen of the zodiac. They are ruled by the sun. They rule the fifth house. So they're all about being in the limelight and being um, 
happy and generous and having fun. And what I love about Leos is their confidence. You know, they're confident, they're um, strong, they have a strength about them, but they also have a very generous and kind nature as well. You know, they can be the lion that roars, but they also like you to pet them sometimes and baby them and give them some attention, right? So I love that about Leo. And then Virgo uh, is the sixth sign of the Zodiac, rules the sixth house. Uh, Virgo is my sign. Uh, my husband, my daughter and I are all Virgo in my house. And Virgos, what I like about Virgos is their attention to detail and their ability um, you know, to work hard and, and be efficient and, and effective. And they love to serve others. You know, They're the sign of service. So they like to help other people, um, especially people that are sick or that are in need. Um, they have a very um, helpful personality. They like to help people get tasks done, whether it's practical or emotional. Um, I love that about Virgo. And they're, they're great communicators. You know, they like to write, they like to learn, and they, they make um, great conversationalists. So I like that about Virgo. And then Libras. Libras uh, are the, they rule the seventh house. Libra is the sign of partnership. You know, they, what I like about them is that they are the peacemaker. You know, they, they don't like conflict. They tend to avoid it. And they like to be the, they're the one that'll see both sides of an issue and be the middleman to try to, you know, make peace between people. And well, I can see it both ways, right? So I love it that they try to have peace and harmony in, in all of their life and work and relationships. Libras try to be the peacemaker. So I really like that about Libras and the Scorpio. So um, if uh, Scorpio, it's interesting, is one of my favorite signs. Scorpios get a bad rap, um, but it's amazing because guess what? Guess what house Scorpio rules? The eighth house. Uh -huh. So any Scorpio sun sign person is going to resonate with eighth house issues, okay? Death, transformation, rebirth, all of those things that we talked about about the eighth house is also going to affect a sun sign Scorpio. Scorpios, to me, are survivors. They're one of the strongest signs in the zodiac because they go through very difficult emotional things in their life. They're a water sign, so they feel things deeply, but they're secretive and they're private and they don't like to show vulnerability. So they tend to suffer in silence and, and survive on their own and take care of themselves. They're very self-reliant people, okay? And they are uh, able to heal themselves and heal others. A lot of them go into counseling, therapy, psychology, and spiritual work, really. And they have um, spiritual gifts, you know, as a water sign, Scorpio does. So that's uh, some of my favorite things about Scorpio is their ability to keep a secret too, right? And, um, and, and they're always there when you need them. Um, and if they trust you, they will be loyal to you for life. That's kind of my, my vibe with Scorpios that I've known. And then Sagittarius is the, um, the ninth house and Sagittarius is the uh, traveler. What I love about Sagittarius is that they are optimistic and very um, optimistic and open-minded people. So they like to peep, they like different cultures. They like different food. They love to travel. They love to interact with different religions and, and people that are different from them. And what I like about them is that they're happy-go-lucky kind of people, right? Um, and they always see, you know, the silver lining in situations. Um, you know, I always find that Sagittarians don't stay depressed uh, very long. They're, they're able to snap out of it pretty quickly because they have this positive outlook because they're ruled by Jupiter, the planet of abundance and good luck and good fortune, right? And then Capricorn is, you know, the 10th house ruler. Capricorn is what I love about them. My dad, my brother, my, my best friend, and my grandfather are all Capricorn. And uh, I have a lot of them in my life. And they, I love their, their work ethic and their devotion to their family and how they do everything to really take care of their loved ones in a practical way. Um, they're very, um, very dependable, responsible people. And I like working with them at work. I, I love being friends with them because I'm very compatible with them, you know, because they're an earth sign. I just love how they um, help you get things done. And they're just very um, achievement oriented, very talented, and they're great workers, you know, and I love they have leadership skills. You know, I love how Capricorns um, can take the lead and are really good at administration and being supervisors. They make, you know, great uh, bosses, really, in my opinion. Um, and then Aquarius. Aquarius is the is the rebel. You know, they rule the 11th house. They rule 
um, you know, humanitarian causes, friendship groups, and Aquarians are innovative. They're forward, they're futuristic. They are non-traditional. I like how they question authority and they question uh, tradition. You know, just because things were done a certain way doesn't mean it's right or it works anymore. And that's what I like about Aquarius is that they, they rebel against things and question society. Well, why do we do it that way? It doesn't make sense. And I like how they are very confident in that and, and innovative people. And, um, and Pisces uh, is one of my favorites as well. It's the 12th sign, the final sign. It rules the 12th house in the chart. Pisces, I love their kindness and their compassionate nature and their artistic creative abilities. You know, um, they're kind and they're just very, um, you know, helpful people. And I love how they are so creative, you know, musical and artistic and, and they are really good at helping people with their problems. You know, whenever someone isn't, is in pain, they can feel people's pain. They're empathic, very empathic um, and able to put themselves in other people's shoes and make a lot of them go into counseling and psychology, but that's what I love about uh, Pisces. So those are kind of the 12 signs. Uh, you can ask me anything you want about it, but those are kind of my, my short list. Oh, I love that. You should see the whole thing of notes. I'm like, oh, that's my daughter. That's my Sagittarius is my granddaughter. Capricorn is my honey. Oh, um, nice. And, yeah, cancer daughter and a cancer grandson. So it really resonated. And what, what you said is so funny because for years, in my younger years, 20s, teens, I was a true Scorpio. I had the stinger, right? And oh, I see yeah. now it was from my trauma. It was like, oh, no, I yes. was so protective. No one could get close. That's but right. here's my question for you, because I found it to be true for myself, and we, I think we still got about two minutes, is a lot of people that meet me and get to know me, they go, there's no way you're a Scorpio. And, and I go, well, this is what I say, and I don't even know if it's true. It's just the energy that I feel. I said, listen, there's light and dark of everything. In life, uh -huh. signs, I go, I feel that when you do a lot of your spiritual inner work that you can transmute. It doesn't mean... Um, not the full Scorpio traits, but like I am open and vulnerable. That's how my clients love me. I am, you did nail about lots of rebirths, lots of trauma, and I, I am resilient and strong and all, all yes. that spoke. But can, is there a, I don't like the words dark in life, but I think you know what I mean, right? Oh, yes. Every sign has positive and negative traits. So like for Scorpio, for instance, the lower the lower energy vibration of Scorpio is is the scorpion sting, but the higher vibration of Scorpio is the phoenix and the eagle. OK, so you every Scorpio has those three symbols within their personality that they can be. So you are really have transformed from the, the traditional, you know, stinger Scorpio to the phoenix, the bird and the eagle right that's the eagle is is the symbol the ancient symbol of scorpio actually is the eagle i never knew and, that and that's so yes. funny because i'm always drawn to the phoenix image as yes. well as the eagle so my family buys me the little eagle totems but there's oh, no neat. yeah but I, I never knew why they started you doing didn't know that. that's your yeah. symbol the eagle that's the highest vibration of scorpio is the eagle i never knew that and here's what's funny i had a um I had a guest on the show and at the end, after we shut it off, she goes, Linda, I got to tell you, you, um, you have a strong native American spirit guy that has been with you all your life. You have a large tribe. She said, but there's one that every time you're going through a life transformation, he takes the lead, you know, as the leader. And this time she saw a female, um, native American next to it. And what she say, she goes in the Eagle is circling around them. And oh, I, wow. Yeah, and that is, and here's what she didn't know. I almost passed last year and had to have emergency surgery. Oh, wow. And she was telling me that six months after, because I've had readings and I've always had strong Native American as well as other, but she couldn't have known that. We just met just like you and I are on the show. And then I just had my second surgery 10 weeks ago to repair everything from them saving me. Wow, wow. So... Isn't it funny that through my, that was a, I guess you would say that was a traumatic transformation, right? Because it was an emergency situation. Oh, yes. yes. She said, you are so divinely supported. But that was the first time in all the, I've had human design over the years, 
um, sure. Akashic records, everything that the eagle appeared and now it's appearing again with you. And then the kids buying me little little eagle totems. That's and I'm like, your that's your totem animals, the eagle. Yeah. Yes, that's I'm gonna I'm gonna do some work around that. So I wanted to just say thank you for this sacred message before we jump off. I didn't just notice the end of the show, but this was so insightful for myself and I'm sure our listeners. So I'm gonna invite everyone as we come to a close please visit Carmen at 8and12houses.com in the 8 and 12 uh, numerals. Pick up a copy of her book, um, Sun Signs, Houses, and Healings. Check out all her communities. Visit that website because I'll tell you, you will go crazy. There's so much there to support you in diving deeper. You'll find all of her other books. And Carmen, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with my audience and for the personal message that I received through you today. Thank you. I love talking to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And until next time, everyone, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.